This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Tumblr is a weird and wild place. Launched in 2007, the small social networking and blogging site quickly blossomed into the hip and cool place to be for teens and tweens, to post about their favourite fandoms and reblog gifs of the Faulkner stars or BBC Sherlock being hashtag boyfriend goals. God, I hate myself for saying that. Tumblr became extremely popular extremely quickly and on its rise to fame, or rather infamy, there's been plenty of bumps along the way. Far from just a simple blogging site, Tumblr has a bit of a reputation for being one of the more bizarre and let's just face it unhinged social media sites out there with more than its fair share of disastrous dramas. From fandom antics to viral fake stories to failed conventions to kickstarter scams to actual real world crimes, today let's go through the Tumblr iceberg to revisit some of the craziest and most iconic moments in Tumblr history. Hold on to your shoelaces. Before we get into things, I just want to give a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to make a website for literally anything you can think of, Squarespace is there for you. They have hundreds of award-winning templates for all kinds of sites, so even if you can't code, there are tons of visually stunning options. However, if you do want to get more in-depth and customize things on that level, you totally can. Set up a storefront for your small business with tons of third-party extensions that can help you promote products, streamline bookkeeping, manage inventory, handle sales tax, and ship items across the globe. Running a small business can be stressful, but Squarespace makes it that much easier. You can create a community by adding a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Plus, you can connect with your audience and generate revenue with gated members-only content. You can manage members, send emails to them, and leverage audience insights all on one super easy-to-use platform. Squarespace also has blogging tools so you can categorize, schedule, and share your posts, as well as display posts from your social media and automatically push your website content to other social media. Basically, whatever you want to make, Squarespace will help you do it. Storefronts, portfolios, projects, newsletters, the options are truly endless. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash izzies to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and now let's dive into the Tumblr iceberg. The Onceler Fandom Tumblr was infamously home to one of the most the interesting fandoms of the early 2010s, the Onceler fandom. Back in 2012, Illumination released their animated movie adaption of The Lorax, starring Danny DeVito as The Lorax, and it was kinda mid. Sorry, I know I probably just offended some diehard Lorax fans out there. The book was better, sorry not sorry. But that belief was definitely not shared by a subsection of Lorax superfans on Tumblr. Or rather, Onceler superfans, because let's be real, they didn't give a flying fneed about the actual movie and only cared for one single character, the Wansler. The reason why so many Tumblr users were drawn to this character is a bit of a mystery, but it probably has to do with the fact that he was a tall, dark-haired man who played guitar and was sensitive, but also had a villain arc where he was evil and wore a suit and top hat. The issue with using the Lorax as your source material, though, is that there aren't really that many other characters to have the Wansler interact with or be shipped with. I mean, I guess there's the Lorax, but... It just feels wrong. So instead, it became the norm to ship the Wansler with alternate universe versions of himself, which became known as Wancest. What's even more disturbing than the fact that Wancest is a thing that actually exists is how widespread and common it was. Seriously, Wansler shipping content was inescapable in 2012. While the Wansler fandom is far less popular than it was in the early 2010s off the back of the film's release, there's still a small but dedicated fandom devoted to drawing pics of the Wansler smooching himself. Tumblr Sexy Man And speaking of the Wansler, Tumblr Sexy Man was coined in the early 2010s as a term to broadly describe any fictional male character who becomes extremely popular on Tumblr and garners a huge fandom. And not a fandom for the show or movie or game that he's from, but a fandom solely dedicated to thirsting over this one character. Examples include, of course, The Wansler, Sans Undertale, Bill Cipher, Wheatley, Alistair, Black Hat, and Tony the Talking Clock. The exact parameters for what makes a character a Tumblr sexy man have been argued by scholars for years, and there's still no 100% clear-cut definition, but there are a few common traits that many of them tend to share. They're tall and skinny, they wear a suit, bow tie, and or top hat, they're magical, they have an evil dark side but also a sad backstory or tortured sensitive side, and or they have sharp teeth. The characters don't have to tick every single one of these boxes, but even ticking a few is pretty much a guarantee that the character will take off on Tumblr and garner their own thirsty fanbase. Characters who were intentionally made to be 
the Tumblr sexy man are often called sexy man bait, and if you have a keen eye, you can usually spot them from the organic sexy man. Also, while researching for this entry, I realized that I am now listed as a source on the Tumblr sexy man fan lore wiki page. That's how you know you've made it. <laughs> Just girly things. Just Girly Things was a Tumblr blog created in November of 2011, which is now infamous for its hashtag relatable, hashtag straight white girl energy. The blog posted generic stock images taken from Google with captions over the top, always with a Just Girly Things watermark underneath. The blog very quickly became popular and the images were spread and reposted across the internet because this was during that very earnest 2010s era where we absolutely ate up blatantly pandering relatable content with zero irony. It was truly a simpler time. Some classic examples of of just girly things posts include tanning, buying new Mac makeup, Uggs, making out. That one got 10,000 likes, so you know, the people have spoken on the topic of making out. <laughs> Seeing a boy and wishing he was yours, frappuccinos, being asked to prom, going on Tumblr, Josh Hutchison, liking a guy you can never have, Tumble Boys, wearing Victoria's Secret from head to toe, Cara Delevingne's eyebrows, Niall Horan's eyes. I just love how era specific these are, like individually they're already great, but collectively you could not ask for a better archive of 2010's Tumblr culture, it's so good. Just Girly Things enjoyed many years of unironic popularity before it started to become a bit of a meme, with people making parody accounts and riffing on how vapid and silly the account was. As as well as how stereotypical and heteronormative many of the posts were. Which is ironic since in 2020 the creator of Just Girly Things revealed that she actually had a girlfriend and began posting images with her girlfriend as well as more LGBTQ Just Girly Things posts. It's extremely cute and despite all the hate that it got for being corny or whatever, at the end of the day Just Girly Things was just a creative outlet and a way for teenagers to express themselves and their love for Josh Hutchison. Super Who Lock. Super Who Lock was an extremely popular crossover fandom from Tumblr in the early 2010s. It combined the TV shows Supernatural, Doctor Who, and Sherlock, all three of which were already considered mega fandoms in their own right. Art and fan fictions from this fandom would often feature the characters meeting and living in the same universe and usually being shipped together. It's unknown exactly why this specific crossover of shows amassed such a huge and thriving fan base, but the shows all did have a few things in common. They each had huge and thriving fan bases of their own, they incorporated elements of science fiction, fantasy, and or mystery, and they featured quirky, intelligent men who made snarky quips. The Super Hulok fandom peaked around 2013 to 2014 and had an absolutely huge impact, not just on Tumblr, but on the wider internet. It's one of, if not the most popular crossover fandom in the history of fandom, and a lot of fandom culture and trends we see today can be traced back to the Super Hulok boom of the 2010s. Misha Apocalypse. As previously discussed, Supernatural was a mega fandom on Tumblr, with all of the actors garnering huge fan bases of their own. None more so than Misha Collins, who portrayed the angel Castile, one half of the beloved Death Steel ship. We're gonna talk about April Fools more later on, but TLDR Tumblr really loves elaborate April Fools pranks, and in 2013 they had cooked up the perfect scheme. A Tumblr user called Loki's Leather Suit was the first one to suggest that everyone change their icons to this image of Misha Collins on April 1st, and when the day came around, Tumblr was absolutely flooded with Misha icons. It spilled over onto other sites, with users even changing their usernames to the point where basically every social media was infested with Misha Collins' face. This event was dubbed the Misha Apocalypse and was so widespread that the actor himself chimed in, tweeting, The hashtag Misha Apocalypse is worse than an ordinary apocalypse. I've signed up for facial identity surgery so I never have to see that face again. Dashcon. Without a doubt, Dashcon is Tumblr's most infamous trash fire. Originally named TumbleCon USA, a name which was later changed for legal reasons, Dashcon was an unofficial Tumblr convention hosted by Tumblr users for Tumblr users in the beautiful state of Illinois. I'm from New Zealand, so I cannot confirm nor deny whether Illinois is actually beautiful. Uh, please sound off in the comments. With day passes ranging from $30 to $50 and weekend passes costing $65, attendees were super excited about all the fun activities that the con had lined up. Fandom meetups, art stalls selling merch for a variety of fandoms, and special guests including the podcast Welcome to Night Vale and the band Steam Powered Giraffe. However, it became apparent pretty much immediately that this was going to be a huge disaster as soon as attendees started showing up. Dashcon organizers had estimated between 3,000 and 7,000 attendees for the whole weekend, but it's believed that even at its peak there were only around 500 attendees present. 
yikes. This became even more of a problem when the hotel informed the organizers that they would need to pay $20,000 to use the hotel facilities which the organizers weren't expecting as they quote, claimed to have verbally negotiated to pay the venue gradually throughout the convention using ticket sales rather than issuing an upfront payment despite their contract suggesting otherwise. So yeah, these clowns made a verbal contract with the hotel instead of a written one and it opened up a floodgate of issues. The con would have to be shut down if they didn't raise the 20k and quick so the organizers began rallying the few attendees at the convention to fundraise money as well as soliciting donations online via Tumblr. Miraculously they managed to raise $17,000 to keep the con running but this fundraising debacle raised suspicions over whether the whole thing was some sort of scam. As the convention went on things got even worse. Both Steam Power Giraffe and Welcome to Night Vale cancelled which was the reason many attendees even came in the first place. Those with tickets to the panel were infamously reimbursed with a free hour in the small child sized ball pit which sat in a largely empty room for attendees to use. And potentially pissing though it's still unclear whether anyone actually peed in the ball pit or whether that was just one of many mocking memes made at the expense of the disastrous convention as it unfolded. In Dashcon retrospectives made by several ex members of the team since the event occurred it's been made clear that a lot of them were very young and inexperienced and the whole thing was basically a mess from day one. The organization team underestimated the scope of hosting an entire convention and generally just carried out extremely shady business practices. Never agree to terms of a contract verbally, get it in writing, oh my god I can't believe that has to be said but Jesus Christ. To this day that haunting image of the ball pit is still one of Tumblr's most infamous images and a symbol of how utterly bonkers the site and its user base could be. John Green Copypasta the John Green copypasta incident occurred in 2015 and was a contributing factor to the author leaving the platform. Back when Tumblr gave users the ability to edit other people's posts when reblogging them, which was an absolutely terrible feature that they took way too long to get rid of, John Green made a post celebrating 200,000 followers on his blog called Fishing Boat Proceeds. Someone reblogged this wholesome thank you post and replaced it with… this. <laughs> This isn't even the whole post, it gets way more graphic, no I'm not gonna show it here, and needless to say this immediately became a huge meme and copypasta for people to spread around. John Green responded in an honestly very level headed and kind way, acknowledging that it was just a joke but noting that it could come off as pretty homophobic and reminding people that there's no shame in whatever sexual preference that people had. He then ended up leaving the site for good which was a huge deal back then because he was basically about as Tumblr famous as you can get and was pretty much the poster child for the entire site. This became like a whole meme like oh my god tumblr users chased john green off the platform with gay copypastas ha 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 but in reality this was just one contributing factor of many john green had amassed a large and extremely dedicated group of fans and followers but in a kind of niche tumblr-y youtube -y way that didn't really translate into actual fame and then he released the fault in our stars which became a viral phenomenon and he became actually famous and suddenly he was facing a lot of criticism not only for certain elements of the fault in our stars but for every everything else, his other writing, his YouTube channel, his blog, him as a person. He became a bit of a punching bag going from Tumblr's indie darling to that cringe guy who wrote The Fault in Our Stars and is super weird and out of touch. This mockery eventually turned into actual harassment when very serious claims began to be leveled at him and with all of this going on I think the copypasta meme going viral was kind of just the straw that broke the camel's back. Tumblr Prom As the 2010s rolled around, Tumblr really began to find its identity as a site and that identity very quickly became very meta. What I mean by that is that a lot of the humour and trends on the site boiled down to wow Tumblr is so weird and quirky, we're all so weird and quirky for using Tumblr, lol, lmao. There were a lot of in jokes and the humour was all very self referential primarily because many users saw Tumblr as this sort of safe haven for internet weirdos and they took solace in seeing the site as an exclusive club, a secret that only the most terminally online of internet users were in on. This spawned a wave of weird sort of meta AU joke posts about building a Tumblr university where Tumblr users would attend and the jokes were that the reading materials would be like John Green, the uniform would be flower crowns and Dan and Phil merch, you get the idea. Tumblr prom is basically an extension of this. The first known instance was posted in 2010 and reads quote, Tumblr prom, how it goes, you go to a person's ass box and ask them to be your Tumblr prom date and when they 
except you would go to the prom together. On May 25th, 2010, you would dress up in your prom attire and take a picture of yourself, and instead of buying corsages, you reblog each other. Now this is epic. I also really love the watermark in the corner that just says Justin Beavers. This is like the most 2010 Tumblr thing I can imagine. So did people actually dress up and post pictures in their fancy duds for Tumblr prom? Mm, uh, probably? Unfortunately, due to Tumblr's awful archival system, it's really hard to find any authentic 2010 Tumblr prom posts, so I'm just going to charitably assume there were enough kids who had fedoras and skater dresses with Faultnar Stars Converse lying around to make hashtag Tumblr prom a thing back in 2010. What we do know is that it's definitely a thing now, though nowadays it's seen as more of a cheesy, ironic, cursed Tumblr history thing, some people still dress up in prom outfits to celebrate Tumblr prom every year, and even if it is kind of in mockery, it's wholesome mockery. Yahoo buys Tumblr. This entry simply refers to the fact that in early 2013, Yahoo brought Tumblr for a whopping $1.1 billion. Because Tumblr is a hell site, it's drastically depreciated in value over the years and in 2019, the owner of WordPress bought it for just $3 million, which is basically like on par with the cost of a decently nice condo in New York. <laughs> Hilariously, Marissa Mayer, former CEO of Yahoo, recently came out to state that she she regrets buying Tumblr instead of Netflix or Hulu, both of which are of course now billion dollar companies. Tumblr users actually take a lot of pride in the fact that they drove the website into the ground and made it untenable for basically any and all companies to make profit off of it, and you know what? Yeah, they should be proud, that shit is hilarious. The Scam Trifecta the scam trifecta is composed of three infamous failed crowdfunding projects, All or Nothing, Miss Officer and Mr. Truffles, and The Ark Project. All or Nothing started as a simple Tumblr post with user discontented ramblings writing the following prompt. An asexual and pansexual become roommates and have wacky adventures. The show is called All or Nothing. Plot twist, the asexual is really super outgoing and is a huge flirt, while the pansexual is extremely socially awkward and has trouble ordering coffee, let alone getting a date. User, everything is night veiled then posted this illustration with the caption, oops, my hand slipped. From there, things escalated quickly. An Indiegogo campaign for an all or nothing web series was launched, for some reason asking for only $600, which is an insane lowball for any project. <laughs> Hilariously, the $1 tier was simply called Ally. <laughs> Surprisingly, the funding goal was reached relatively quickly and the project ended up earning nearly 6,000 US dollars and then nothing ever came of it. I guess we figured out whether it was all or nothing. <laughs> In a follow-up post years after the project imploded, the original creator of the Indiegogo fessed up and apologized. To give credit where credit is due, it's a genuinely good apology the OP admits to launching the project as a naive kid with no idea how production worked and claimed that the money was essentially stolen by a relative whose bank account they used to store the funds as they didn't have a bank account of their own at that time. They promised to give out refunds to those who could verify their Indiegogo pledge, but as far as I'm aware there were never any updates on the status of the money after this, and for all intents and purposes, it's gone forever. The Miss Officer and Mr. Truffle situation was very similar to All or Nothing, in fact it was freakishly similar. The project was inspired by a random out of context Tumblr post, this time a photo of a police officer standing next to a tiny bear cub captioned, Officer, come quick, there's been a robbery. Tumblr user Typet reblogged the post writing, this would be a great cartoon. Like this RCMP lady in a bear just going around solving crimes and mysteries and helping folks out. User Lemon Tea Flower then began to post illustrations of the bear and cop duo, christening them Miss Officer and Mr. Truffles. After a series of fake animated screenshots showing the hilarious trials and tribulations of the wacky characters gained a large amount of popularity, it was decided that it would be made into an animated series and a Kickstarter was launched. Though the Kickstarter goal was 80,000 USD for a 7 minute animated pilot, which we don't even have time to go into how disproportionate that is, it only reached around $9,000 before the plug was pulled. Though initially the reception towards the potential pilot was extremely positive, that goodwill was chipped away by the failed crowdfunding efforts as well as several accounts of animators being underpaid and mistreated on the project. Though thankfully in the case of Miss Officer and Mr. Truffles no money changed hands, it still stands as a cautionary tale about the dangers of making dumb Tumblr posts into full series. Seriously, back then you could take any mildly funny Tumblr post with like 10,000 notes and there'd be 50 people going, oh my god, this needs to be a thing, let's make this a show. No, it doesn't need to be a thing. Don't. <laughs> 
Finally, the ARC project was pitched as a JRPG-style video game for queer people and people of colour with a diverse cast and an in-depth story. From the Indiegogo page, quote, Follow the story of a deity bored with life amongst the gods who leaves to find a purpose in life. Reincarnate your deity into numerous worlds, live through the lives of others and gain life experience. But watch your god energy, you need a lot of it to continue your astral journey. Fight monsters only you can see, sometimes around very particular civilians who refuse to get the heck out of your way. And most of all, see a game and a story that the big wigs refuse to give. Sounds kinda cool, sounds kinda neat, sounds kinda rad, but no. Aside from this vague description, the Indiegogo page showed absolutely zero content for the game aside from some basic illustrated images of the main characters. No gameplay footage, no concept art, no screenshots, nothing at all. Additionally, the Indiegogo campaign was asking for about $100,000, but they planned to break this goal up into at least eight separate campaigns to crowdfund for each part, which is an incredibly strange and ill-advised way of crowdfunding, it tends to just be a one and done kind of thing. Unbelievably, despite how dodgy and vague and frankly scammy this whole Kickstarter appeared, they knocked their funding goal out of the park, earning $6,000, double what they were asking for, at least for the first campaign. And the money was never seen again. The ARC project Tumblr blog continued posting sporadic updates for at least a few years after the Indiegogo concluded, but the project eventually fizzled out. Despite being marketed as a welcoming and diverse game for queer people and people of colour, the creator of the ARC project was added as a pretty nasty bigot who frequently made racist remarks and held some pretty gross beliefs. It's honestly really unfortunate that the ARC project went up in flames because a lot of Tumblr users were genuinely looking forward to playing a game made by a diverse team with diverse characters. These aren't even all the terrible scams that have gone down on Tumblr, but they are the most famous and they are the three that form the scam trifecta. I like your shoelaces. So you know how Redditors used to have that catchphrase, the narwhal bacons at midnight, and it was meant to be used to identify yourself as a Redditor in public and seek out fellow users? Well, nowadays you'd be tried and hanged in the streets if anyone so much as thought that you'd ever browsed r slash Wall Street bets, but back then it was a thing, and it was cringe. So it's no wonder that Tumblr also had its own very embarrassing secret catchphrase. Around 2012, Tumblr user BLTSL4 made a post which read, quote, if I ever see any of you in public, the code is, I like your shoelaces. That way we know we're from Tumblr without revealing anything. I'm just gonna keep saying this to strangers until I find a Tumblr person. Must keep reblogging. I'm going to be so suspicious if anyone tells me this now. Remember, the answer is, I stole them from the president. And thus, I like your shoelaces, thanks, I stole them from the president, became the secret code phrase and reply used by Tumblr users to identify other Tumblr users out in the wilds of IRL. Cue floods of fake stories about people yelling, I like your shoelaces out in public and attracting flocks of fellow Tumblrites, or people saying their name was, I like your shoelaces at Starbucks and the barista writing, thanks I stole them from the president on the cup. Okay, I made that last scenario up, but I'm willing to bet at least $8 that there's a post out there just like that broken dashboard. This entry basically just refers to the fact that Tumblr is broken as hell. Not only is the site infested with bots and scammers, but the website itself is very prone to weird glitches and issues, and it's not uncommon for the dashboard to just fully become unusable. Tumblr staff even had the gall in 2015 to make a compilation post called The Best of Glitch 2015, compiling some of the worst, most dashboard-breaking glitches posted by Tumblr users. An extremely bold move coming from the literal staff of the broken website and question. Tubby Custard. Tubby Custard refers to an infamous post made in 2012 purporting to show the production of chicken nuggets. The photo attached to the post shows a machine churning out bright pinkish slash red liquid into an overflowing bowl, while the caption reads in part, Say hello to mechanically separated chicken. Basically, the entire chicken is smashed and pressed through a sieve, bones, eyes, guts and all. It comes out looking like this there's more. Because it's crawling with bacteria, it'll be washed with ammonia, soaked in it actually. But hey, at least it tastes good, right? High five, America. In a subsequent reblog, another user commented, Bitch, that's the Tubby Custard Machine. Because bitch, it was indeed the Tubby Custard Machine from the Teletubbies. This post became a huge meme and Tubby Custard became something of an in-joke between Tumblr users, but there's actually additional context for this post. See, all these years people have been making fun of OP for how gullible and stupid they were to post the Tubby Custard Machine as an example of real food production in America, but it turns out they were actually riffing the whole time. In 2021, Tumblr user Wasserplane replied to a Tumblr Heritage Post repost of 
the meme with additional context, noting that the OP's post was actually a copy of another post which instead used this image, clearly of some sort of strawberry ice cream. So while Tumblr users were making fun of OP and reposting Tubby Custard as an example of being ill-informed on the internet, it turns out it was ironic the whole time and they were the ones who were ill-informed. How the turns have tabled. Constable Frozen. Constable Frozen is the name of a Disney fan blog who gained popularity with their extremely well edited but bizarre Frozen edits. The blog was launched in May of 2014 and gained popularity by posting edits of the characters from Frozen, often in GIF form and very competently done. As the blog continued to gain popularity, users began pointing out the bizarre and surreal nature of it. The edits were good, yes, but they were also really weird, like this GIF of Elsa transforming into Iron Man, or this comic of Anna eating Elsa's hot dog or this extremely weird set of images depicting a tiny Elsa hiding in a can of Pringles and then being forced to eat one. While the blog had amassed a lot of fans who innocently followed because they liked Frozen and other Disney properties and thought the gifts were cool, a lot of them became weirded out as the post veered more and more into, uh potential fetish territory. Though Constable Frozen denied that there were any sexual undertones to his blog, I kind of beg to differ because, I mean, come on, what is this? Destiel Putin. Also known as Destiel Putin Election, this entry refers to an event that occurred in 2015, and if you're not chronically online, this is so hard to explain, but I'll do my best. So everyone was in quarantine at this point and was anxiously awaiting the US election results. As America held its breath, the 18th episode of the 15th season of Supernatural aired, essentially canonizing the Death Steel ship and sparking Death Steel Gate. Essentially a huge fan backlash and discord directed towards Death Steel finally being canonized as a ship. It's a whole thing, the, the Supernatural fandom in general is just a whole thing. Anyway, Death Steel is trending everywhere and thousands of screenshots and memes and edits of the Death Steel confession scene are flooding Twitter and Tumblr. And as this is happening, a news story breaks about the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, resigning. Except the way that most people online hear about this story is through a supernatural death steal confession scene edit. Basically this entire day is a total mess, there's election discourse, supernatural discourse, Vladimir Putin resignation rumours, and all of these are crossing over and converging on each other. While the hubbub did eventually die down, the death steal confession scene being used as a way to convey completely unrelated and sometimes serious real world news stories became a bit of a meme. Nowadays a lot of people on Tumblr get their news delivered through Castile and Dean shipping memes and there are always like a billion comments saying, this is how I find out the queen died? Bone stealing witch. The story of the bone-stealing Tumblr witch, also known as Bone Ghazi, is one of Tumblr's most infamous stories. If you've heard people talking about how crazy or weird Tumblr is, chances are that you've heard them use this story as an example. In December of 2015, a call-out post was written reading, quote, PSA, Tumblr user Lil Fucking Monster is stealing human bones from cemeteries in Louisiana. Please don't let them get away with this and spread the word slash signal boost. In response, the user in question made a post titled, No I am not digging up fucking graves, Jesus fucking Christ, claiming that they weren't stealing the bones but simply gathering the ones that had washed up and been displaced and that no digging or grave robbing had been involved. They accused critics of being racist towards indigenous and magical practices, claiming that they had posted the bones in a safe space for POC witches to offer them to others who might want to use them. From their post, quote, Magic is dark. Magic is bloody. Magic Magic is scary. Magic isn't just fucking white light fairy dust bowls of honey on your damn altar. You all can stop touting the threefold rule or Wiccan read or karma thing, that shit applies to only those who believe in it. Full fucking stop. I am not Wiccan. I am not fluffy. I work with death and bones, curses and hexes, the dark and the things not for the faint of heart. And you ain't about to shame me for it. Obviously this whole situation blew up because people read the post and were like, Wait, what? At first people thought this was a joke until they realized, no, this call-out post was 100% accurate. Tumblr user Lil Fucking Monster really was stealing human bones from cemeteries in Louisiana. What? <laughs> Call-out posts and memes about stealing bones abound, and though the OP deleted their account soon after, the damage had been done and it had been immortalized in Tumblr history forever. In 2016, the New Orleans Advocate actually interviewed the bone thief who revealed that the police had conducted a search of their home where they found human bones, and they had also subpoenaed 12,000 pages worth of Facebook correspondence. Despite how serious this all sounds, as far as I can tell, the investigation never amounted to anything, and the Tumblr bone thief continues to roam free to this day. They say that on a dark and stormy night on the moors you can still see them. The interwebs. 
Created by user LovePine1997 around 2012, the Interwebs was a popular webcomic series focusing on humanized versions of websites. Now this was not a new phenomenon, people had been making Facebook and YouTube and 4chan into anime girls long before this series began, but the Interwebs in particular got really big on Tumblr, probably because Tumblr itself was depicted as like a quirky blue haired weirdo with Converse, and that just struck a chord with people. Some of the design choices were pretty funny, like Steam being a gamer or MySpace being a ghost, but others are just so outdated that it hurts. Facebook is like a vapid blonde who does duck faces all the time, Pinterest is depicted as this weird middle-aged motherly figure wearing a STFU I'm pinning apron. <laughs> Honestly, the fact that Blogger exists and is a very prominent character should tell you all you need to know about the era this was made in. The shipping was pretty hilarious too, Blogger x YouTube was really common, as was Tumblr x 4chan. Incredible. The interwebs blog continued to gain popularity as the creator would post many comics and one-shots of the human websites interacting and joking around. The fandom grew so large that there were even in-person cosplay meetups where fans would cosplay as the various websites. The webcomic eventually began to die out around 2015 with the creator posting a video in 2017 explaining why they ended the series. They said that they were only around 12 to 13 when they first started the series so the rapidly growing fandom, many of whom could be pretty demanding at times, was quite overwhelming. They also described their own dislike of the series and explained that they were now in college and too busy to maintain it, not to mention the copyright issues. Despite this, the interwebs has inspired tons of other humanized website AUs on Tumblr and other websites, and these series likely wouldn't be as prolific as they are today without the interwebs paving the way first. Fake Tumblr Stories at this point, Tumblr is pretty infamous for having extremely fake sounding stories go viral. Some infamous examples include the Down with Sis bus story, which recalls the night that a Tumblr user and a friend were walking down the street when a bunch of people wearing shirts that read Down with Sis jumped out of a van and attacked them. Which is one of my favorite Tumblr stories because it implies there are just roving gangs waiting to attack cisgender people like they're a mob spawn in a video game. There's the time that a Tumblr user saw a girl wearing a messy bun and a crop top in Starbucks, prompting her to hiss hipster blogger at her, to which the girl hits back fandom blogger and then the two exchange tumblers. My three weed smoking girlfriends is a classic, this one's clearly meant to be ironic but I'm including it because it's called a bunt, lives in my head rent free. There's the story of the tumblr user who started screaming their lungs out when a new homestuck update dropped and then when the police were called they told them why they were screaming and the police officer also started freaking out and like sat down and started reading the homestuck update right then and there in their driveway and their partner had to get them a shock blanket. <laughs> Then there's the magnum opus, the Raylo shipping story, which describes a confrontation between an adult Raylo shipper who's quote, wearing her hair in three buns and wearing a Kylo shirt, and a teenage anti-shipper. The teenager starts yelling and screaming about how horrible and awful and problematic Ray x Kylo Ren is, which prompts her mother to come over and tell her off for yelling at a stranger before dropping the bombshell that she herself also ships Raylo. And then, no joke, the mother buys the OP a Nutella crepe as an apology. Absolutely zero knows, that shit still makes me laugh all these years later. The most infamous fake Tumblr post of all is the one about a Tumblr user who gave a homeless man $20 before being confronted by a stranger about how the homeless man didn't deserve the money. And the story ends with the homeless man singing opera homeless style while a crowd of bystanders begins doing the Gangnam style dance all in sync. It's an incredible story but it doesn't really count because it doesn't technically exist. It was a fake post created by a Reddit user who had a penchant for editing fake r slash that happen style stories. Sarah Z has a really good deep dive video about it if you're curious. Cole Sprouse's social experiment. Cole Sprouse has faced a lot of criticism in the public eye lately, but before he became the uncool Riverdale guy, he was the uncool Tumblr guy. Back in 2012, Cole Sprouse, at the time famous for starring in The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, made a tweet announcing that he had made a new Tumblr blog called Culture Concept. While the blog started off as a place for him to post his photography, he quickly became preoccupied answering the floods of asks that fans sent his way, which grew more and more by the day as the account grew in popularity. Because, you know, he was a celebrity on Tumblr and that was a novelty. Plus, as you can see, he was kinda quirked up and if there's one thing Tumblr users in the 2010s loved more than celebrities being online, it was celebrities being quirky and relatable online. A little over a month of solid culture concept posting later and Cole Sprouse would make his final post. So my goal for the 
this website was accomplished. I got all the information that I needed and now I'm deleting this account. Thanks to all who watched, read, and listened. I hope that in some small way my words carried weight. I love this goofy ass image. The fedora peeking out from the background really makes it. Following the shock announcement, Sprass took to Twitter to explain further, reading in part, quote, Well, the Tumblr results are in. I suppose I've given this enough time to fester. The goal was to see how a group of people reacted to a suggestion of being observed. Some of you guessed this. Good job. You guys forgot about everything I said in my previous post, jumped to conclusions, and changed your disposition to me. Interesting. You guys reacted exactly how I thought you would, gaining nothing from what I said and acting like I betrayed you. Success and shame. I don't know you. You don't know me. People have the capability of being nice and mean. Don't blindly follow someone. Naturally, discourse followed. Some of it about how ethical all of this was, but most of it was just remarking on how weird Cole Sprouse was. It was pretentious and snobby, it was kind of embarrassing, but above all, it was just really weird. <laughs> to this day, no one's really sure why he did it, and I'm sorry that I can't illuminate the issue any further. Just one of life's great mysteries. Do you love the color of the sky? This one's pretty simple. Do you love the color of the sky is a popular image on Tumblr which makes use of the site scrolling format to make one super long image that depicts different colors of the sky as you keep scrolling down. This otherwise wholesome post became a bit of a meme as people began editing random images or memes into it, and Tumblr users began complaining en masse about the post as the constant reblogs of it would clog up their dashboard and it would take a super long time to scroll past them all. Because the image is such a relic, the original post still gets shared around occasionally, often with reblog for good luck or make a wish attached. Sharpie Bath. The Homestuck Sharpie Bath story originated on 4chan's CGL board, which stands for Cosplay and Gothic Lolita. And look, I try not to read out posts that are too long, usually I just like to paraphrase, but the story is, it's so iconic, you really just have to hear the whole thing to get the full effect. Quote, <clears throat> Room with friends for Anime Expo. They have a few stragglers to make up for last minute dropouts in the room. They don't know one of the girls too well, but they need the money. We'll call her Terry. We get to the con Friday night and Terry is three hours late. This wouldn't have mattered, but we had to pay a check-in and she hadn't paid yet. Get settled in. She throws her stuff all over the room and proceeds to start yakking about her new favorite thing, Homestuck. Saturday rolls around. Terry is cosplaying a troll from Homestuck, the one with the red eyes and the Libra symbol. She locks herself in the bathroom. I need to get into my makeup, don't come in. Two hours later, she still isn't done. There are two people in the room with Trinity blood costumes and myself and my friend have makeup that takes at least an hour to apply. Plus we all need to shower, not that our costumes automatically take priority, but two hours, really? We notice a funny smell coming from the bathroom. Door is locked and she won't let us in. Fifteen minutes later we start to get really suspicious. Friend decides to shimmy open the door. Her purse and valuables are in there and she needs to go. Get door open. Terry is sitting in the bathtub naked. The bathtub is filled almost halfway with what we later found out was 70% alcohol and sharpie dye. Bottles and sharpies everywhere. It's all over the walls, on the tile, on almost all of the towels, on several articles of clothing and bags in the bathroom. What she says? I was going to clean it up. Bitch, you tried to dye yourself grey in a bathtub. We kick her out of the room. She pays $700 in damage fees. She gets skin poisoning slash damage from her stupid stunt. The post made its way onto Tumblr where user Phantom Shadow backed up the account, claiming to have been there and vividly describing the dripping grey handprints that the cosplayer left on the bathroom walls, which is amazing. The sheer imagery. This post is one of the all-time classics in the Tumblr Hall of Fame, showcasing the absurdity of the Homestuck fandom and the internet in general. But the big question is, did it really happen? In my original video about the Homestuck Sharpie bath from like two years ago, I proposed that it was, but now I'm not so sure. It's never been 100% confirmed or denied, but in my opinion, its authenticity is highly doubtful. Though Phantom Shadow wrote that they would post pictures of the scene of the crime, no images of the infamous Sharpie tub have ever surfaced despite multiple fake images circulating. The legitimacy of the story has also been called into question because bathing in alcohol can be extremely dangerous and even fatal. As your skin can absorb the alcohol into your bloodstream if you're submerged in it for any lengthy period of time. Phantom Shadow claimed that Terry was actually kept at the hotel afterwards to pay for all of the fines, when in reality if she'd been soaking in alcohol and Sharpie for hours to the point of getting skin poisoning, she'd likely need immediate medical attention. Again, just a game theory as there's no real way to prove or disprove this until irrefutable evidence comes out. Hashtag release the Sharpie bath images. Rabiosexual. In 2017 and 2018, 
2018, the quote-unquote rabies pride movement started up on Tumblr, with users posting pictures of rabies pride flags and announcing their desire to get and transmit rabies. People were making your favorite character as a rabiosexual post, rabies pride stickers were created, and rabies-themed mood boards flooded the site. It became one of those sort of outrageous examples that people use to make Tumblr look bad, like, yeah, sure, Twitter is terrible, but those freaks over on Tumblr are sexually attracted to rabies. It's pretty obvious when you actually look at them for like two seconds that these posts were all very much intended to be purposefully shocking and outrageous and most importantly, satirical. However, the roots of the rabies pride movement are actually pretty interesting. Initially created in 2017 by a Tumblr user called Dirk Has Rabies, which is fitting, it was designed as an identity slash movement for him and his friends to use. From the creator's Tumblr, quote, Rabies pride is for autistic trans people. It's for all the people that were treated like animals, treated like they were contagious or had a deadly disease by classmates, siblings, anyone, just for being too loud, too hyper, too close, too much, due to having autism and being openly trans. As far as I can tell, this was completely unironic and was genuinely used as a label for a small subset of people. A handful of other Tumblr users then discovered the movement and made joke posts about it, most notably one aesthetic flag account that posted a rabies pride flag, and a parody account called Rabid Loving who posed as a rabiosexual in order to mock the idea. From there, the idea was twisted out of its original context and made to appear as if it was some weird rabies fetish thing that all Tumblr users were super into when that wasn't the case at all. Sonic for Real Justice Sonic for Real Justice was a Sonic-themed anti-SJW Tumblr blog created in May of 2015. The blog gained infamy after several iconic posts were made, including the introduction of Mod Shadow, who claimed to be an atheist, anti-SJW, anti-feminist, anti-gun control, and pro-logic, Mod Sonic and Mod Amy breaking up, and Mod Shadow's surprise reveal that they were, in fact, an SJW all along. Needless to say, while the blog started out as a place to post and discuss anti-SJW sentiment, it very quickly devolved into insane infighting and drama, with mods quitting and rejoining daily and drama spiralling out of control. It was basically just role-playing Sonic characters bickering back and forth. Despite many remembering it fondly as a ridiculous, unironic anti-SJW cringe fest, the whole thing was indeed revealed to be an elaborate prank pulled by a couple of kids on school break, which is both shocking and totally not shocking at all. I made a far more in-depth video going through the blog in its entirety and cataloguing all of the drama from start to finish if you want to learn the full story, but the TLDR is justice for mods silver. April Fool's Day. Every year, Tumblr changes up the website in new and comedic ways to celebrate April Fool's. This is a beloved tradition on the site and there have been some pretty iconic April Fool's pranks pulled over the years. In 2015, the site transformed into the Tumblr Executive Suite Productivity Edition, which allowed users to make spreadsheets and gave them their own personal assistant, Copy, who would sit on the dashboard and give helpful hints. The site transformed into a Fox News-esque campaign site, which outlined the candidates for the upcoming election, all of which were lizards. Users even got to vote on and make campaign posters for the candidate that they wanted to win. Not to flex, but my favorite candidate, Mop, ended up winning. Hashtag Mop Nation rise up. In 2018, Tumblr riffed on Bitcoin by making Tumblecoin, which users could mine and use to buy virtual items, with Tumblecoin eventually crashing and burning by the end of the day. In 2022, crabs. Just crabs. Woody's Roundup Woody's Roundup was a network of Toy Story role-playing blogs which filled Tumblr around 2017. The idea was to find offensive Tumblr blogs that had been spewing hateful, bigoted content that had deactivated, snatch up the usernames, and convert the blogs into Sheriff Woody role-playing blogs. All of the blogs used this specific image of Woody as a profile picture and would often reply to posts with the word partner, howdy, or random gifs and images of Woody. Thus, where the name Woody's Roundup came from, as the Woody Collective saw this as a sort of cleanup movement, rounding up all the varmints and ne'er-do-wells of Tumblr and purging their blogs in place of silly fun Woody roleplays. Woody's roundup was championed by the people of Tumblr who were already frustrated with the lack of moderation on the website's behalf with hate speech blogs running rampant. The Woody's roundup collective were seen as vigilante heroes cleaning up the streets of Tumblr because the big guys in charge didn't want to get their hands dirty. Sixpence. Sixpence was an infamous horror-themed blog on Tumblr which posted quote, creepy, bizarre, horror, paranormal, and science content. It was kind 
kind of just one of those generic all around horror blogs that would post whatever dark or spooky thing popped up on the dashboard and it became popular because people like to get a little daily dose of spookiness. And when I say popular, I really do mean popular. At the height of Sixpence's reign, they were probably one of the most popular and well known users on the site which is quite the achievement given that Tumblr fame is extremely hard to achieve. But the Sixpence empire began to crumble once users started noticing some pretty uncomfortable trends with the blog. Firstly, there were copious stolen posts which were often lifted directly from other Tumblr blogs or r slash no sleep with absolutely zero credit at all. A lot of the posts range from in extremely poor taste to actively demonizing mental illnesses for spooky points. A really common genre of posts on the blog was those posts where it shows an artist with schizophrenia's work over a period of time and the point is to be like, OMG look at this terrifying scary schizophrenia art, this could only have come from the mind of a twisted freak, all the while completely ignoring any historical context. A lot of artists depicted in these kinds of posts had extremely interesting stories and in reality were just branching into different mediums and more experimental styles as time went on. But ignorant posts like this reduced them just to their mental illness and how spooky and scary it is rather than focusing on their life stories and their extensive bodies of work. This was alongside tons of cheap creepypastas lifted from r slash no sleep where the twist is that the serial killer has a mental illness. <sighs> Basically, Sixpence was like many other horror content farms on the internet. Completely unafraid to steal content, publish fake information, and use mental health issues, quote unquote scary disabilities, and real world tragedy for cheap clicks. But then things got worse. Sixpence launched a service called Sixpence Heals, where for the low, low price of $30, you could fill out a Google questionnaire with all your quote, major and minor doubts, and they'd send you an email back with their healing advice. Obviously, Sixpence was not qualified to be therapizing anyone, not only because they ran an extremely tone-deaf exploitative horror blog, but because they were literally just a college student with a Tumblr blog. The scheme never went ahead due to the huge amount of backlash, so thankfully no vulnerable Sixpence fans were scammed out of their precious $30. This debacle was followed by yet another drama when Sixpence revealed in a post that their family, who lived in South Asia, had an 8-year-old child working at their house doing cleaning and other housekeeping chores. To this day, many Tumblr users remember Sixpence as that one horror blog with the fake therapy scam and the child slave. Ray-Ban Sale Bots, hackers, and scammers are extremely common on Tumblr, and one of the most common hacks is the Ray-Ban Sale. A Tumblr user's account will be compromised through one method or another, and they'll begin to spam these Ray-Bans one day sale official charity event images, promising Ray-Bans at a heavily discounted rate of $24.99. I literally have no idea how or why this happens so often, it's even happened to me on my own blog. Except in my case it was kind of weird because I just logged in one day and a bunch of these $24.99 Ray-Ban posts were in my drafts but nothing was ever actually posted and I was never locked out of my account or anything. So they got far enough to get into my account and make the posts but then just kind of left them in the drafts and never actually posted them which is extremely funny to me. I guess even hackers get shy sometimes. The Ray-Ban sale posts are so well known that people have made entire blogs dedicated to alerting others about them or just joking around with things like aesthetic Ray-Ban sale mood boards or Ray-Ban scammer pride flags. Tumblr ads. This entry simply refers to the fact that Tumblr ads are super weird. As we've discussed, it's not exactly the most advertiser friendly platform and it's worth basically nothing, so the large majority of advertisements are just extremely bizarre. Are you aware about this? You better not be. Pay less for contacts. <laughs> And this is the fucking image. <laughs> Lara, I was born into darkness, just like a puppy, only my darkness is eternal. Love hot romances? I'm finally ready to be myself. Uncategorized March 18. And the person who posted the ad is just called Galadriel. <laughs> okay. Toucan. Learn more. Sleep with soap in your bed tonight, here's why. John Green is back. With literally no punctuation in the most ominous image you'll ever see. God, Tumblr advertising is amazing. In 2021, ex-Tumblr staff Sreegs made a post explaining why the ads were so bizarre. They noted that Tumblr doesn't collect much info on users, meaning their ads aren't as highly tailored as other sites, and it's mostly weird third-party ad providers which often don't follow advertising guidelines so they just end up being extremely bizarre. They noted that Tumblr was actually very successful at marketing around 2013 to 2016, having tons of big celebrities on the platform and popular brands like Denny's and Gush's integrating Tumblr humor ads onto the site to great effect. Yahoo took notice of the success and merged the exclusively Tumblr marketing team into the Yahoo marketing team, causing most of them to resign. Without a team of marketing experts tuning into Tumblr trends and what was hit with the kids, Yahoo just kind of gave up and let the third party advertisers take control, leading to the oversaturation of bizarre and nonsensical ads on Tumblr 
today. Needle cookie. This is another one that I've actually already made a video on, but I'm going to summarize the story here. In 2017, a popular Undertale fan artist was gifted a box of handmade cookies by an attendee only to bite into them and discover that there were needles baked into the dough. They posted a photo of one of the cookies that they had spat out with blood on it, writing that the matter was unable to be investigated and that they had lost all trust and would not be accepting any food at conventions anymore. Despite no mentions of Tumblr or fandom in this original post, a Tumblr user took this incident and used it to spin an unfounded narrative about shipping. One passage from this post, titled How About We Don't Hurt Real People Over Fictional Ships, reads, quote, From discussion, Twitter, Reddit, it seems likely that she was given these cookies because she draws sand slash frisk art, and a fan decided that drawing a ship they didn't like was worthy of attempted murder. This post sparked a huge amount of shipping drama, with pro shippers claiming that anti-shippers had made an attempt at murder, and this was war, and were these anti so sick they had to resort to violence over fictional characters? Even to this day, a commonly touted reason that anti-shippers are the worst is that one time one of them put needles into a cookie over Undertale shipping drama. The original post didn't mention shipping once, and all of the sources mentioned by the original Tumblr posts are just Reddit threads with people saying, well admittedly I don't have all the info but I heard that it was because of shipping stuff. So pretty unreliable sources. At the end of the day it could very well have been because of some shipping based vendetta but there's no concrete evidence to back this up and the original poster never followed up to clarify. Actually it turns out they ended up leaving the internet due to being cancelled or something so you know. So unfortunately I doubt that we're going to get a satisfying conclusion to the Tumblr needle cookie story anytime soon. Tumblr aesthetics. Tumblr has cycled through a lot of iconic aesthetics throughout the years, from the Galaxy Leggings OK OK shirt Doctor Who scarf era, to the boho chic Polaroids and flower crowns era, to of course Arctic Monkeys vinyl fishnets but you're not Maddie Healy grunge. I made a video a while ago on the evolution of different Tumblr aesthetics and it was really fun covering all of the different styles and trends and how they've evolved and changed over time. But something that I didn't really touch on and what this entry refers to is the fact that a lot of these Tumblr aesthetics had pretty dark sides. While it's fun to revisit old Tumblr aesthetic nostalgia in the current day, we have to be careful in the ways that we're bringing it back and reviving it. Because often imagery and messages of self-harm, substance abuse, and eating disorders were baked into the fabric of these aesthetic and fashion communities. Black and white images of pills, fashion and outfit inspiration that was actually just thinly veiled thinspiration or eating disorder encouragement. The glorification of abusive relationships through romanticized captions and edits. It was genuinely really dark and the worst thing was that a lot of the time it was extremely hard to consume any aesthetic content without falling down this rabbit hole of really concerning and scary messaging, and even becoming a part of a community that embraced and encouraged that. Again, Tumblr aesthetics are super fun and nostalgic, and there's nothing wrong with indulging in a little bit of a throwback or engaging in some good old fashioned nostalgia. I myself definitely have a lot of fond memories over these subcultures, but it's still important to note how dark a lot of these communities were and how badly they affected many young and impressionable users, and it's important to make sure that while we're bringing these aesthetics back that we don't also bring that harmful culture back with it. TCC. TCC stands for True Crime Community. For most people, being a part of the true crime community just means being interested in true crime, mysteries, forensics, etc. But in this context, it's more to do with Tumblr's serial killer fandoms. True crime fans that aren't just interested in true crime cases, but actively idolize serial killers and criminals, making cute edits of them, writing fanfiction about them, posting love poems, poems, wearing quirky shirts riffing on actual crimes, the whole shebang. Some commonly idolized killers in the world of TCC are Ted Bundy, Richard Ramirez, Adam Lanza, Elliot Roger, and the Columbine Shooters. Needless to say, Tumblr's TCC is absolutely deplorable and disgusting. In my opinion, it's fine to be curious or interested in true crime or dark mysteries, but making headcanons and hashtag funny memes about mass killers speaks to something really deeply, deeply wrong inside a person. Not so fun fact, TCC is also an abbreviation for another community on Tumblr, the Teacher Crush community, which is surprisingly prolific and basically just consists of minors thirsting after their real life teachers and adults encouraging and normalizing this behavior. Yeah, it's fair to say that Tumblr has some extremely dark corners. Hey P Brain, you teleport? Hey P Brain, you teleport, also known as Max2019, was an obscure and complex ARG hosted on Tumblr throughout 2018, which has gained some renown for its unique use of Tumblr as a medium by which to conduct an ARG. Tumblr users were pretty 
used to receiving generic spam messages from porn bots like, hey hot stuff, check out this totally not suspicious link for hot pics, winky face. But one bot in particular caught users' attention when instead of DMing some dodgy link or talking about hot singles in your area, it instead said, quote, Hey P-Brain, you teleport? Naturally, users began sharing this hilarious message around, speculating over whether it was some sort of glitch in the bot's programming or whether it was even intentional at all. It turns out that it wasn't a bot, but instead the beginning of a carefully curated ARG hosted through a network of interlinked Tumblr blogs and websites. Tumblr user Surreal was the first to catch on to this, writing in a post, quote, Checking the timestamps, all of Sexy Girl Max 2019's posts have just been made today. They're formatted impeccably like bot messages and posts, but they're just a little off. Off. This isn't a bot, this is a human controlling a blog acting like a bot. The Sexy Girl Max 2019 Tumblr blog linked to a Neo Cities page which led users down a rabbit hole as the bizarre site began to unfold in front of them. Disjointed glitchy pages, strange images and videos, and recurring biblical themes, angel motifs, and mentions of sickness filled the site as Tumblr users began to try and unfurl the meaning of it all. By following a breadcrumb trail of various Tumblr blogs, users uncovered a story of modern guardian angels who live solely as virtual creatures, referred to as uniform resources source locators or URLs. The ARG followed a guardian angel called Max who had been banished from heaven and sent to Limbo, the angel equivalent of hell, thus making her charge, a young girl called Anita, extremely sick. At the climax of the ARG, in order to save Max and Anita, users were tasked with completing a quote-unquote teleportation ritual, which involved things like observing the sun or moon, looking at a reflection of your eyes and coming to a conclusion about yourself as a human, eating and drinking water, telling someone you love about something you've thought about recently, etc. For a pretty ominous and creepy ARG filled with twisted religious symbolism, it was actually extremely wholesome. Max 2019 basically tricked a bunch of Tumblr users into performing acts of self-care and kindness towards others in order to complete the ARG, and that's just plain sweet. Users began performing the teleportation ritual en masse and posting their tasks, and through a collective effort, both Max and Anita were saved. Overall, Max 2019 is relatively obscure in the world of ARGs, though it had a huge impact on those that played it and the small fandom that formed after it ended. It was an incredibly unique and pretty groundbreaking ARG, being one of the first to successfully use Tumblr as a medium to convey its story and gameplay, and it absolutely deserves more credit for that. I have a video covering the entire ARG day by day if you want more Max 2019 content, but the TLDR is that Hey P-Brain You Teleport started out as a shitpost and ended up being a genuinely incredible and innovative ARG. And so we reach the end of the Tumblr iceberg. Like I said in the beginning, Tumblr is a weird and wild wild place. Sometimes it's a little scammy, sometimes it's a little scary, sometimes it's just straight up disturbing. But it still remains as one of the most unique sites on the internet with an incredibly fascinating history and legacy. Tumblr is responsible for so much of what the internet is today, so many iconic trends and memes were born there, and once you look past the bonkersness of it all, at the heart of it, it's genuinely just a community of extremely funny and creative people. Despite how messy it is, Tumblr will always have a special place in my heart even though it's probably taken about 15 years off my life. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it, um, I really hope that you enjoyed that video. Um, as you probably know by this point, I absolutely love talking about Tumblr, uh, this one has been on my list for a long, long time, uh, but yeah, here it is, I'm, I really hope that you enjoyed it. Definitely let me know if there's anything that I missed out, I know that there are. Um, there were so many just weird and wild moments on Tumblr, too many to put in one iceberg, so yeah, 100% share any that were not included, share any of your favorites, share ones that you were personally involved in, please just share your experiences because uh, Tumblr stories are always the best. Also, I'm really sorry for my voice, I'm actually like sick at the moment, I'm just recovering from like a cough cold thing. Um, I feel fine, but it's just my voice sounds terrible, so uh, I'm really sorry about that, hopefully it's not too annoying, um, not too much more annoying than my normal voice anyway. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, I really really appreciate it, um, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye. A huge thank you to my Garfield overlords over on Patreon. Rain Pendragon, The Fabulous Librarian, Strawberries, Simon, SHSL Sunson, Sheriff Whiskey, Oliver Brains, Michelle Olsen, Matt LRJ, Lee XX, Katrina Likes 5 e Stuff, Joe Bradshaw, Jesse Chisholm, Hazy, Helm Hamburger Hand, Hanson Mybra, Grip Gunderson, Fitzy, Dozo Blint, Doug, David Martinez, Dana Homegardner, Charlie B, Carmel Coffee Bean, Blue Mayfeld, Astrium Vortex, and a riddle wrapped in enigma hidden by a question mark. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, it means the world. If you want to join these guys over on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And yeah, thank you so much for the support, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye!